After a year of attempts, life, and just plain bad luck, I can finally share my thoughts on one of the most recent releases from William Optics and some exciting news coming to you from the Astro World TV team. All coming up on this edition with Astro with Eric. Roll it! Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Astro with Eric. This is a video that has basically been a year in the making. I have been attempting to do a video review on this piece of equipment for quite some time since I got this uh, telescope uh, last year about this time and I've been consistently asked about when was it coming out so I can give my thoughts and honest um, feedback on this telescope. So finally, I'm able to do that. I appreciate the patience um, from everybody who's asked me about it, especially um, fellow Astro World viewer, uh, Gideon Sanders. And this, without any further ado, is the William Optics Floral Star 91, or also known as the FLT 91. It is a three and a half inch or 91 millimeter apochromatic triplet refractor. And we're going to go through some quick specs here on this. It is a 5.9 focal ratio and a uh, focal length of 540 millimeters. It weighs about 12 pounds and it comes with lots of different um, accessories that I thought were really cool that it would come with and a few others that you'll need to know about, especially if you're going to do this with astro image, um, for astro imaging or astrophotography. So a couple things, as I said, it weighs about 12 pounds. Um, what I have on the bottom here right now is I have some risers and a Los Mandi dovetail because I like the stability of a D-style um, dovetail on my telescopes. So. That's why I have this one on here. I, I had this one from a previously um, owned William Optics telescope, but it does come with its own um, dovetail, which is a kind of unique style in a way. It's a, I would say it's kind of a hybrid of a Los Mandi and a Vixen style, which you would normally see on small telescopes like this. Um, you would see the more Vixen style dove, um, clamp uh, dovetails here. Um, but it's a little bit wider because you have the, um, the rings here. They are much wider than I would say on other types of telescopes that I've seen that would use a um, Vixen style. So to um, help with that and give it more stability, they had, William Optics did widen the, um, the dovetail bar here to um, accommodate for that. It does have a manual focuser here. Um, so if I, lock this here so it does come with its own manual um, rotator rather field rotator and you would just go ahead and screw that piece that uh, this right here this bolt in to lock it in what I have on my telescope right now is I have a ZWO ASI um, plus as well as if I can turn it over here a ZWO electronic autofocuser or EAF and I'm pairing this with an ASI 2600 mono and the two inch filter wheel that's the um, seven slot filter wheel and if you can see right below here uh, I also have the um, The off-axis guider. Make I'll turn it here so it's a bit easier for you to see. I have the off-axis guider here. This is the smaller off-axis guider. Um, I believe it's like a eight millimeter um, prism. So this much smaller one with a 290 mini guide scope. I'm um, guide camera rather here. 
So I like using off-axis guiders to deal with, you know, flexure, um, to avoid that um, and address that. And it makes things a little bit easier, I, in my opinion, for guiding, having everything um, basically set up this way, but that's just my personal you know, preference there. Um, as I said, it weighs about 12 pounds. With everything on it right now, it's probably adding on maybe another four or five pounds. So it is relatively lightweight. It's easy to travel with. It does come with, when it's sent to you, it does come with, come packaged in a nice padded carrying case, which is really good for traveling. You can use this, um, maybe put this with your carry-on luggage or use this as your carry-on um, if you're gonna go traveling um, on an airplane or anything like that. Certain things that caught me off guard when I was setting this up initially was one, I was unable to originally get focus onto the, um, on the telescope, even though I had it set with 55 millimeters and everything you know was set there. One thing that was noticed is this guy, is that it comes with, if I take this off here, it comes with a, what they call visual astronomy ring. It, that's already mounted onto the back of this. And this is an M93 back here. So you, and so you have to remember to take this off. It took me, you know, a couple of days of, you know, trying to find out why I wasn't achieving proper back focus to finally realize that this, you know, had to be removed. And I think if I would have actually spent the time and read the manual a bit more and paid closer attention, I would have been able to quickly just get this off day one. But just as a heads up, don't forget, if you are gonna use this for astro imaging, you need to take off this ring or else you will not achieve the, the back focus that you would need. Now, there are some things also that come with this scope. It's, as I mentioned, you have the visual ring here. And with that visual ring, it comes with the back, it comes with a two inch roto lock. And if you are gonna use this with, for, for visual astronomy, you would use that two inch rotor lock and a diagonal such as this William Optics two inch diagonal and lock that and feed that in and lock it in. And then you can go ahead and use those two inch or one and a quarter or one and a half inch eyepieces that you have and you would be all set. But as I, meant, as I said earlier, you would wanna make sure if you're gonna use this for um, any, for astro imaging, take all of this off as well as for travel which I really think is nice that all William optics come with is that their dust cap does come with a um, does come integrated with a focus mask or a batten off mask already into the uh, dust cap which is good so you don't have to worry about um, possibly forgetting that dust that um, that uh, focusing mask because it's already a part of the dust cap now for imaging, you will need, because this is an, a, a triplet um, refractor, you will need some sort of a field flattener because when you are imaging with a refractor such as this, it, you will have what we call um, some sort of aberration or field curvature, especially around the edges of your image. And if you don't correct that with some sort of field flattener, um, you will definitely notice that. So there's two different options to that you can um, that you can use to flatten you know that image for you. The first one already that I have mounted here. This is the William Optics adjustable reducer um, and flattener. It reduces down to 0.8, um, so you will end up with a focal ratio of about 4.7 and a field sorry, uh, focal length of around 430. Uh, this is adjustable. This is the what they call the flat 6A Mark III. You will have to get a the type that either you get the, William, the FLT91 special edition type of reducer flattener, which comes with the M93 back, or, or if you already have this flattener, you have to purchase that M93 back in order to put it onto the FLT91 here. 
and, this, and you will have to adjust this to about 5.4 millimeters. So that way you can go ahead then put on your um, imaging crane and you'll be able to go ahead and have everything set with the proper back focus. Now, if you don't want to have a reduction in your focal ratio or especially your focal length, you can get a standard uh, field flattener. This is the William Optics um, Flat 68 Mark III. Uh, this cost about $650 versus the reducer flattener is just under $300. But same thing, this one already has is an M93 back, and you will just go ahead and do the same adjustment of about 5.4 millimeters to um, so you can use that with your imaging train. The one thing that you that you will have to do is, is that the flattener originally comes with a much smaller or shorter flange on back flange. I can't, I don't know if you'll be able to see that here but the flange that you have to get, you have to get a separate one that is a little bit um, thicker or wider rather to, and uh, that's I believe around 10 or $15 for that. So it is an extra cost for anything like that. So it is a great scope for traveling. As I said, it is small, it is relatively lightweight it's great for those types of small mounts, um, such as those 20, the ones with maybe a 25 pound um, uh, payload capacity, or even the small, newer harmonic drive mounts, um, strain wave type mounts, such as the ZWO AM5, or the Pegasus Astro Nix, or like the Rainbow Astro, uh, Rainbow Astro um, 135. So, which are very small, lightweight, great to travel with, and this will, um, you can pair it with this and it'll handle it like a champ. So, other than that, I think it's overall, in my opinion, it's been a great telescope for me. Um, I will share some, some um, photos that I have taken and um, at the end of this video, but if I were to do it all over again, I would absolutely not change a thing. I would still go ahead and get this um, telescope. It is, if you're thinking of your first um, telescope, as if you're diving into the world of astrophotography, it is a great telescope to use as your first scope. I have used William Optic scopes and owned them in the past, and I've never had a problem with them. They are great quality. And this scope itself, as far as budgetary, I think it's relatively budget friendly. It is just under $2,000 um, US to order and purchase this scope. And everything here, yeah, you this flattener is expensive, no doubt, but it's just the nature of the beast. If you want to have that um, flat field for your image, but you want to maintain that Focal, um, that focal length, you are gonna have to get this or you can just spend half this amount and get the reducer flattener. Besides that, it is, like I said, it's been a great scope and I absolutely enjoy using it and it's been a lot, it's been a treat getting it, um, you know, getting it out in the field and having a lot of fun with it. So that's it for the scope here and I hope you, um, this um, quick review um, helps you if you ever decide if you're in the market for a small refractor. Don't forget to uh, maybe maybe consider the William Optics FLT91 in your um, as far as you know one of the choices you want to make. Other things going on here with Astro with Eric and as, as well as with Astro World TV is first off next week. I'll be heading to the Northeast um, Astronomical Astronomy Forum, um, NEF, in Suffern, New York. It's gonna be a great time. I'm really looking forward to it. This is gonna be my first opportunity to go. I will be going with the Astro World TV um, team, Dan, Pete, myself, as well as a few others. Um, Simon and um, Tyler are going to be there representing and being a part of um, their own um, Astroworks um, YouTube channel, but as well as supporting ZWO, so at least Simon is, and I believe, and Tyler is going to be there, you know, also probably supporting Explore Scientific, which is the company that he works for, 
And we're also going to have Jesse Winkley, uh, Winkley there as well. So it's going to be great to have us all there. So if you are going to be at Neef, um, feel free to stop by our booth and um, say hi to us. And we are also going to be planning on um, doing some raffles, some pictures, things like that. So uh, we really, you know, look forward to meeting you and um, hanging out with you. Um, besides that, also be on the lookout for Dan's um, new venture, um, Astro World Telescope. And we're looking forward to that. I'm happy for him. He's going to be really, he's going to be selling products such as the William Optics FLT91 here, as well as other William Optics um, products, as well as a few others, such as Prima Luce, um, Player One, Optolong, and a few others. So I believe the website's up now. So um, go ahead and check that out, astroworldtelescope.com. Uh, and if you haven't had a chance to check out Astro World TV, Feel free to check us out. What are you waiting for? It's a great show, a lot of fun. We enjoy um, just having a great time talking about astronomy and astrophotography, especially in giving tips and advice and having great guests on. We recently had um, Warren Keller from the Masters of Picks Insight on, as well as uh, Stacy Dowden from Astro Stace, um, to name a few, uh, to name a couple guests that we've had on recently. And we just have a blast doing it. And we encourage you, if you're interested, to uh, come and check us out. We are on every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, as well as on Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern. So just come on over, hang out with us on YouTube or Facebook or Twitch. And also, don't forget to check out us, uh, us out on the Discord. We have a Discord server that I think we're about 150 some users on there right now. Uh, so if you have questions or anything like that, drop in a question or a comment or anything like that. Let us know how we're doing and we really appreciate it. So until next time, again, thank you for joining me on Astro with Eric here and checking out this video. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And consider subscribing, ring the bell. And when you ring that bell, whenever I bring out new videos, um, you'll be alerted to those new videos and you can check those out. So until next time, clear skies, and as Dr. King said, only in the darkness can you see the stars. Take care, everybody.